alcohol, it's everywhere. Whether it's in a bottle of beer or a glass of whiskey. In today's society, the act of alcohol consumption can be found in practically all forms of media. But what message is this constant presentation of alcohol sending to our audience? And is alcohol truly the cause of a good time, as it's so often made out to be? This video essay will be exploring the glamorisation of alcohol in the media, focusing mostly on its presentation in TV, whilst looking at the question of how its portrayal has changed over the years, and why there are so many favourite TV drunks. So pour yourself a drink of your choosing, sit down, and maybe question why you've chosen that specific beverage. <laughs> How can you make him tea? Because I could use some with honey and lemon. <laughs> and bourbon. But actually, without the honey and lemon. And the tea. Traditionally, alcohol has been presented in a comedic light. Going as far back as 1916, with the various scenes from Charlie Chaplin. As he finds himself drunk and gets himself into amusing predicaments. A prime example of this was from his short film, 1am where we witness Chaplin stumbling around his house after a heavy night of drinking, and his battle to get another few glasses in him. However, a hundred years later, these type of scenes can still be found in today's TV. The typical person, crashing through the door, is so drunk they're a danger to themselves, yet that won't stop them from chugging one more drink. Let's do some shots! This constant exposure to alcohol being presented in such a comedic way can be seen to aid in the desensitisation of alcohol, with viewers forgetting about the actual issues being presented, or how these characters' actions perhaps mirror their own. Why is this the case? Many people sit down in front of the TV after a hard day, wanting a few hours to stop being reminded about how bleak their life seems to be, and just watch a secret agent, a gang of drunks, or even a talking horse. This idea is backed by a poll carried out by researchers other lines of inquiry, which during a poll found that 61% of respondents chose to turn to TV to escape the misery of the real world, connoting the idea that people rely on TV to help put life on hold for a second. Sometimes, when you get home from a long day of getting kicked in the urethra, you just want to watch a show about good, likeable people who love each other, where, you know, no matter what happens, at the end of 30 minutes, everything's going to turn out okay. You know, because in real life, did I already say the thing about the urethra? Characters in modern TV can regularly be seen with a drink in their hand, no matter what the situation is. If you are to party, have a drink. If you're hunting down monsters, grab yourself a flag and a veil. Attempting a deadly spy mission, you get the picture. Great, there better be more of those. However, the issues arise when the media starts to present alcohol as the answer to more serious issues. When you feel alone in the world, or when you find yourself at your lowest points. Alcohol is shown to be this safe raft, supposedly keeping you afloat when you feel like you're drowning. You guys are depressing. I'm trying to enjoy my cone over here. Dr. Amanda Atkinson, Public Health Institute senior researcher of Liverpool John Moores, when interviewed on the matter said, this undoubtedly frames alcohol to viewers as an effective and normalized everyday coping mechanism. However, the nature of depiction and the extent to which a viewer relates to the character is important. If alcohol use as a coping mechanism is portrayed positively, then it will be interpreted as an effective and accepted way of dealing with emotional problems. This suggests that viewers can find ideas for dealing with their own personal issues based on what they consume on TV. Viewing these actions as the norm and what is expected in today's society. To alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. As a result of this, viewers can find themselves more inclined to rely on alcohol to aid them through life. Let me get drunk, huh? Stuff it down with some brown. Stuff yeah. it down brown. Especially when the media has been seen to present alcohol as a consequence free drink. With various shows presenting their characters to drink dangerous levels of various alcohol, they're always managing to complete whatever jobs they set out to accomplish. Nick Schillings, a writer for The Odyssey, said how it was enjoyable to watch characters get drunk, sober up, have an entire storyline, and get drunk again. Sterling Archer, for example, is the world's deadliest spy, but also one of the largest alcoholics shown on screen. Sorry, had to take that. 
why would only buy his mother? Oh, shut up. Archer is constantly shown for drinking his hand, usually drawing a life for an admission, after already drinking enough alcohol to kill a horse. Yet the audience never see any real side effect of this dangerous drinking, aside from the odd hangover which Archer always manages to handle. Bloody Mary, full of vodka, blessed are you among cocktails. Pray for me now, and at the hour of my death, which I hope is soon. Amen. Uh, perhaps a coddled egg. Even during the ads, a place where viewers can take a break from viewing the constant consumption of booze from their much-loved characters, they still find themselves watching more alcohol-related content. Glenn Gooley, for the best of times. With studies showing that 59% of all commercials shown during shows popular with teens contain alcohol, meaning that although the adverts the audience might be watching may not necessarily be trying to sell them a specific alcohol product, the product placement of said booze can still be found. Glenn Gooley, for the best of times. This leads to the idea of alcohol having a permanent position in life, always being relevant in any given situation, and viewed as a normal and socially acceptable pastime. Uh, could I get a mug? You killed that bastard thing, you get one free. I love you. Sidney Brownstone, a publisher at Fast Company, made the point about how even alcohol industry ads, which encourage us to drink responsibly, could very well be promoting drinking, suggesting that although there are clear risks when it comes to alcohol consumption, we're still expected to drink it, and just hope that we, the consumers, know where the line is when it comes to responsible drinking. However, it would be untrue to say there are no examples of the media presenting alcohol in a more accurate light. With shows like Bojack Horseman and Happy presenting just how hard it can be for alcoholics dealing with their addiction. Both characters can usually be found in some form of a bar, drinking their pain away as they fantasise about simpler times and whatever this is. But both have moments in their shows where they've gone clean, trying to leave the reliance of alcohol behind them for the sake of personal reasons revolving around friends and family. Hello, I am Bojack Horseman. Obviously, you know who I am because I'm very famous and also we called ahead. And I am here because I need help. Both characters are presented to clearly struggle with their soberness, with overwhelming scenes being formed for the audience to portray just how difficult it is for them, but also to inform the viewers of the true side effects of alcohol. That it's not just a drink, it's a drug, which many people find themselves addicted to without even realising. Even It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia present this issue in one episode. The gang can usually find themselves in various situations whilst they're highly intoxicated. I drank three bottles of champagne and hung out with a stray dog all night under a bridge, okay? It was sweet. Along with this, during the current run of 14 seasons and counting, the gang have never once been shown to be hungover, no matter how much they consume. 24 12, beers there from counting, right? 12, 12 for Matt, for so Matt. that's sort of our thing that we do. I was really gonna drink that many, just, just the yeah, two of you tonight. Yeah. However, during one episode where the gang enter quarantine, they find themselves viciously sick, and at the end of the episode, find out they were actually dealing with alcohol withdrawals. Alcohol withdrawals? That's great! Is it great? It means we're all alcoholics. Although this episode is still filled with its regular jokes and hijinks, Alcohol.org said the situation was no laughing matter, with the behaviour presented by the gang being all too real when it comes to potential symptoms to alcohol use disorder, suggesting that although the show is solely a comedy, it could potentially be used to present awareness to the type of symptoms viewers should be aware of. The social media publisher, Joe, saying if Charlie was a friend of yours in real life, he'd step in and help. Right? In conclusion, although there are signs the media are trying to make the audience more aware of the real side effects of alcohol, studies at JRF have shown that the effects and consequences of drinking were only shown in about 10% of the drinking acts featured in said shows. Showing how although there are signs the media are changing, it's a slow progress, one which leads to the question, can society break away from the views the media present to us, or will we, like Chaplin, continues to chase the bottle.